Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday evening service for July the 15th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord our God, your dominion is incomparable and in glory incomprehensible. Your mercy is immeasurable and your love for mankind inexpressible. Look upon us and upon this holy house in your loving kindness and grant to us and your children everywhere your abundant mercy and compassion. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the age of ages. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the age of ages. Hallelujah. 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 Let us commend ourselves to one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, we offer ourselves, all that we have and all that we are. Light up our dark hearts by your light, Lord Jesus. May your word be in our way. May the light of lights come to our dark hearts. May the Spirit's wisdom come to us this night. May the peace of the Spirit be ours this night. May the peace of the Son be ours this night. May the peace of the Father be ours this night. And may the peace of all peace be ours this night and forevermore. Let's all read together Psalm 142, starting at verse 1. With my voice, I cry to the Lord. With my voice, I make supplication to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit is faint, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden the trap for me. Look on my right hand and see. There is no one who takes notice of me. No, no refuge remains to me. No, no one cares for me. I, I cry to you, O Lord. I say you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Give heed to my cry, for I am brought very low. Save me from my persecutors. For they are too strong for me. Bring me out to prison, so that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Let us pray. We offer to you, Lord, the troubles of this day. We lay down our burdens at your feet. Give us your peace and help us to receive your word, that we may rest with quiet and contented hearts. And we'll have the readings of the scriptures, please. <coughs> the first reading is from the book of Obadiah. For the day of the Lord is near against all the nations. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. For as you have drunk on your holy mountain, all the nations around you shall drink. They shall drink and gulp down, and shall be as though they had never been. But on Mount Zion there shall be those that escape, and it shall be holy. And the house of Jacob shall take possession of those who dispossess them. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau stubble. They shall burn them and consume them, and there shall be no survivor in the house of Esau. For the Lord has spoken. Those of the Negev shall possess Mount Esau, and those of the mm -hmm. Shephelah, the land of the Philistines. They shall possess the land of Ephraim and the land of Samaria. And Benjamin shall possess Gilead, the exiles of the Israelites, 
who all in Hala shall possess Phoenicia as far as Zarephath, and the exiles of Jerusalem who are in Shepharad shall possess the land of the Negev. Those who have been saved shall go up to Mount Zion to rule Mount Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. of parables. Then the disciples came and asked him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For these people's hearts have grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Do you happen to have my sermon? Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. My apologies. I think Mary knew I was long winded this afternoon. So. <laughs> our intercessions and prayers. Into your hands, O Lord, we place our families, our neighbors, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and all whom we have met today. Enfold them in your will. Enfold them in your will. Into your hands, O Lord, we place all who are victims of prejudice, oppression, or neglect, the unwanted, the frail, May everyone be cherished from conception to the grave. May everyone be cherished from conception to the grave. Into your hands, O Lord, we place all who are restless, sick, or prey to the powers of evil. Keep them in your peace. Keep them in your peace. Into your hands, O Lord, we place all members of our community and others in our hearts. Watch over them and watch over us this night. Watch, watch over them, them and watch, watch over us this night. Into your hands we place the treasures of the earth, the gentle breeze, the soft rain, the whispering leaves, the laughing stream, the broody mountains, and the welcoming meadows, and the wonderful comets that are passing by our earth. Watch, watch, over, watch over them and watch, watch over us this night. Into your hands we place the wonders of life, the swift hawk, and the singing lark, the timid mouse, and the badger, and all your creatures, great and small. Watch over them, and watch over us this night. Amen. When I was a small child, my Ukrainian grandmother, also known as my Baba, which is on my mom's side, used to tell me stories about growing up, her growing up, and also stories about her family. <coughs> now these stories never had a deep spiritual meaning, but they're always usually about people that she knew when she was growing up, life events, and what happened. Good stories to entertain a small child full of questions, and if my baba talked long enough, well, I'd get sleepy and have a solid afternoon nap. And maybe that was the point of the discussion in the story all along, was to put this chatty little three-year-old to sleep for a while, 
so the family could get some peace and quiet. Well, Jesus told stories too. And these stories, as you probably all know, are called parables. So, what is a parable? The parable fits under the category of an allegory, a story or a poem or even a picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning. Sometimes a moral one, others a political one, maybe even spiritual, which in this case can be a simple story to use to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson. And I believe that's what Jesus was doing. In today's scripture, the disciples came and asked Jesus why he spoke to them, and not to them personally, but to the crowds, in parables. And it was a good question. But I believe Jesus also gave them a good answer, and I'll get back to that later. As we all know from reading the Gospels, Jesus had tremendous crowds following him during parts of his ministry here on earth. People could see the amazing things that he was doing. He was healing the lame, making the blind see, and even raising the dead back to life. And with the woman who was unclean, her faith in him cured her just by touching his robe. Then there was the feeding of the 5,000, and that number did not even include the women and children in the crowd. It was another astonishing event, as the feeding was done from five loaves of bread, barley bread, and two fish. So, the question that needs to be asked is, was everyone who followed Jesus around that time truly a disciple of him? Questions to be asked, why did people follow Jesus around at the time? Was it out of sheer curiosity? Maybe. Was there something in it for them, like a free meal for the family? Or did they wish to be healed of their physical ailments? We all know the answer to these questions. It's probably yes. However, there was something was there something deeper that the crowds wanted from Jesus, the Son of the Living God? So Jesus states today in the scripture to his disciples, it has been given to you to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them, Jesus says, and that's the crowd in parables, is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, you will indeed listen, but you will never understand, and you will look, but never perceive. For the people's hearts have grown dull, and the ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. So is Jesus trying to be exclusive here in speaking in parables? Is he trying to speak about the crowd so they do not understand? And I would say the answer to those questions is an absolute no. Jesus is speaking to those who are truly part of his sheepfold. For those on the inside of the pen who counted the cost and willingly followed him after they were called. They obeyed and loved Jesus with all, the, with all their heart, mind, and soul. And even though sometimes they found him hard to get and hard to understand, they still stayed. So remember, the crowd is fickle, and it's easily distracted, and they want to be entertained. It was like that 2,000 years ago, and it's like that today as well. People follow along not because they believe, but because they're curious. This Jesus healed the man born blind. We have never seen anything like it before. So I think we'll hang around for a while to see what other things he might do. Hey, I got a free meal last week when he fed that large group. Didn't know how he did it, but I really, doesn't, I really don't care and it really doesn't matter. He fed my family with good food and it was one less meal that we had to prepare and pay for. I'm okay with that. Pretty nice guy, this Jesus. And so goes the crowd. It's the what have you done for me lately attitude. After a week or two goes by, well, the crowd forgets about the miracles that have taken place, and they start to question again who this Jesus is, or who he says he is. And then the going gets tough. 
He talks about us eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Now that was way off the charts and even much harder to consider. He talks about things that the crowd is not comfortable with. What is being mentioned now almost resembles some form of cannibalism. This is too much for us. And so the crowd, without getting the meaning of what Jesus is saying in John chapter 6, gets up and leaves. The party's over for them, the fascination and the fat is gone, and Jesus is still left, or just left, with a small group of followers. No more large crowds, just probably the twelve he chose, and maybe a few others. So what does Jesus ask Peter? He says, will you go away too? And Peter says to Jesus, to whom shall I go? You have the words of eternal life. You have come to believe and know that you, we have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Peter and most of the disciples understood who Jesus was. So the question begs, why doesn't the crowd get it? The crowd in Jesus' day had him right in front of their eyes and they still didn't believe. The crowd today doesn't have that advantage of having Jesus physically in front of them. However, as the clean American Catholic comedian Jim Gaffigan says, bring Jesus up in conversation and everybody gets uncomfortable. Even the Pope says, leave work at work. So, even though he says this jokingly in his, in his commentary, it seems like in our society, Jesus is for the church, not general discussion outside, without using his name in vain. People not understanding the parable is exclusive. It's not exclusivity that Jesus has instituted to keep the people out. It's an exclusivity of the crowds themselves to keep Jesus out. The crowd is just the same in this postmodern era um, today as the crowds were in Jesus' day. And soon as the crowd gets challenged or some, something uncomfortable happens to come about, they don't want to hear anything anymore and they leave. They tune out. That's way too radical for us, or that's not loving and kind to tell somebody that. You Christians, you're way too concentrated on the Bible. It just doesn't fit in in our day and age anymore. It's antiquated and out of date. As one of our bed and breakfast hosts in Nova Scotia told us back in 2012, the Bible is nothing more than a book of fables. People choose to hear what they want and see what they want. They choose their own moral path and make laws unto themselves. The crowd is the world and those unable to hear Jesus' voice and see him for who he is. They do so because they choose not to. They only want something from Jesus if it suits them, if it's convenient, or it benefits them. Leave the rest of the hard stuff to somebody else. So Jesus' message that he uses in parables doesn't make any sense to the crowd. It's a totally different language. They do not understand it because the crowd is not part of Jesus' sheepfold by choice. They want all the benefits, but they don't want any of the pain, suffering and risks that go along with being one of his disciples. So he was a fad for a while, but now it's too difficult, or it's too different of a road to follow. What will my friends think? The crowd feels more comfortable in the world, and that has not changed from 2,000 years ago to today. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for my sheep, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. Just remember, what divides the crowd from the disciples is the Holy Spirit giving us the ability to hear Jesus' voice and see him for who he is. The Logos, the Word made flesh, the Holy One of God. May we all pray in earnest that we see Jesus and hear his voice every day until we meet him in heaven when we hope to hear uh, the response, well done, my good and faithful servant.
and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open us to the future in which we can be changed. And grant us grace to know more and more of your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Almighty God, who does freely pardon all who repent and turn to him, now fulfill in every contrite heart the promise of redeeming grace, forgiving all your sins and cleansing you from an evil conscience. Through the perfect sacrifice of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. May you see God's light on the path ahead when the road you walk is dark. May you always hear, even in your hour of sorrow, the gentle singing of the lark. When times are hard, may hardness never turn your heart to stone. May you always remember when the shadows fall, you do not walk alone. In the name of the Father, Amen. Amen. and of the Son, Amen. Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go now in peace. <laughs>